Hello, my name is Mike Wise, and in this film, I'm going to tell you all about how I met a man named Rick Simpson and cured myself of an incurable disease with his help. I'd sit there and watch any of my family or friends, you know, die because of laws that are based in corruption. I just won't do that, and I don't think anybody else should either. I just said, damn the laws. We need the cannabis plant, and we need it desperately. So I'm asking each and every one of you to stand with me. We have always allowed ourselves to be controlled by the wants and needs of those who are rich and powerful. We have never really grasped the meaning of what it truly is to be free. Yeah. I don't know where they, somebody put this picture together. They put a hat on you? Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what, now that you mention it. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, never, I never took a picture like this. <laughs> <laughs> they just took my face and they, stuck a hat on it. They were like, we need plastic Rick. Right oh, they're now. pretty good with the Photoshop. <laughs> Nowadays. So to start us off, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a retired skateboarder and I rode in the national championship for the University of Texas for the wakeskate division, Hook'em. Um, and as an athlete, I've always been kind of on the go. Um, I've always kind of been rushing around everywhere, not necessarily eating the best food, being kind of stressed out, moving from place to place. And then after college, I started working for ESPN. And doing this, I also traveled. So in this life of traveling all the time, I kind of was putting work first and not really thinking of myself and so I was like I said I was eating bad um, wasn't necessarily sleeping as much as I should have I was definitely stressed out from all the pressures of work after years of of doing this and not taking care of myself the right way I started to develop um, symptoms of a, of a disease and I wasn't quite sure what it was I didn't even know if it was a disease I realized that I had Crohn's disease um, found out about cannabis oil and then used it to cure myself. Anything like that? Action. <laughs> okay. Action. <That> <laughs> All right. I started taking, uh, I started smoking the cannabis as a medication really in 1998. But by, you know, late 99, I was getting desperate because, uh, you know, I still, just smoking the cannabis did help me more than the medications the doctors provided, but it still wasn't giving me the rest I required. So then I got thinking, I said, well, you know, if smoking, just smoking the cannabis helps me, you know, sedate me, helps me sleep, then what would happen if you made a concentrated extract from that same plant material? I went to the doctor in 99 and I asked him point blank, I said, you know, what would you think, you know, if I produced the essential oil from this plant and ingested it as opposed to smoking it? And I mean, when I said that to that doctor, he got a really strange, strange look on his face. And he, you could see the hesitation for a, a minute or so. But then he did look at me and he said, well, it, it would be a more medicinal way to use this. But that's all he would say. And he, and he still wouldn't give me a prescription so I could do it legally. And uh, so, I mean, I went home, I made the extract. And then I was sitting here looking at it and I'm afraid to take it. 
And I thought, you know, that since these doctors were so reluctant to even provide me with a prescription so I could use this legally, I thought that, you know, maybe perhaps they might even kill me. So, I mean, I, it was almost three years that the extracts more or less just sat there. And then finally, when the medical system told me there was nothing more they could do for me, that I was now on my own, uh, I had nowhere to turn. So I turned to the cannabis extracts, and I guess you could say the rest is history. In the world, one drop at a time. Well, every seed bearing plant, the Phoenix Tears Foundation Building Health. I had nothing to do with the Phoenix Tears Foundation. Oh boy. I don't know. I didn't. Uh, no, I'd never seen this before. When did this come out? We got it about, what, two years ago? Yeah. The stuff that's out there being sold today on the internet, there's so many people saying, you know, that they're directly affiliated with me. I think there's even a, a Rick Simpson Cancer Foundation, which I had nothing to do with. Uh, well, just recently, a uh, comment, and it was one of the videos I did. And, you know, you read down the comments, and they're all positive. And I get down to this one, and here's this guy, uh, Rick Simpson is a scam artist. You know, several of my friends sent and purchased oil from this man, and I don't think they even received the extract, apparently. You know, so Rick Simpson is nothing but a criminal, and he should be put in jail. These people weren't buying oil from me. These businesses will then go on the internet and they'll say, my CBD cures your cancer. Um, I've had so many patients who have told me they're trying CBD, it didn't work. These companies are using their power, they're using their marketing to make these lies about CBD only being, being the thing you need to buy. And they're doing it for financial reasons. When, especially when it comes to diseases like cancer, I really think that the most important cannabinoid is THC. But see, the governments are down, trying to downplay the THC. And it, it horrifies me that, to think that how many people who are suffering from you know serious cases of cancer, maybe stage three or stage four cancer, have gone out and purchased CBD extracts, thinking that these extracts are going to you know stop the cancer and heal them, and in the end they wind up dying. You know I I, I mean uh, I, I I always looked uh, at, at all the cannabinoids. I mean the last count I just heard recently was 144 different cannabinoids in this plant. And I'm sure that we don't even know what a lot of these cannabinoids do. So we have, still have a great deal to learn about this plant. But uh, I think that there has been far too much emphasis put on CBD extracts. I, I really do. You don't outlaw the most medicinal plant on earth without repercussions. And now they're going to face them, whether they like it or not. Yeah. And this is long overdue. You, know, you think of all the people that died since they put these restrictions in place. You know, how many people have suffered. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. The it, only studies that they really go off of are the ones where they literally, like, drown, drown the mice with, like, smoke. It's like, hello, you cut off their breathing, of course they're going to die. Well, that was the, the monkey thing. You know, yeah, well, oh, yeah. They, I mean, they put masks on their faces, mm -hmm. and, and the, what they were doing, they were suffocating them. Mm -hmm. They were giving them so much smoke over a five-minute period or something, and well, then when they... When they actually open the brains up, they go, oh my god, brain damage! Cannabis causes brain damage! Yeah, lack of no, brain lack of air causes <laughs> brain damage. You know, God almighty. Yeah. Don't you bullshit. There we go. <laughs> A lot of people will debate over what cure means you know, the definition of cure. If you type in Crohn's disease on Google or on the internet, um, you'll find out that it says this disease is incurable. There is no cure for this disease. And so if you look in the dictionary, it says cure is to relieve a person or an animal of the symptoms of a condition or disease. And so my symptoms are definitely relieved. Which seed is uh, the best for the next well, at the present time, this is a major problem with all of these seed companies. There are hundreds of seed companies, and take a strain like Northern Lights, which is a very well-known indica. Now, if you send to five different seed companies, because they all sell Northern Lights, if you
you send to five different seed companies and you order that strain and you grow them, you're going to find that you're growing five different strains of cannabis with different medical values. At present, there is very little stability in the seed industry. And that's the reason I have to tell people that if you wish to produce these extracts, it's best to find an indica strain that's in around 20% or more THC. Because that's the strains I was using, and that's the extracts that really gave this medication its reputation as being so effective in the treatment of so many medical problems. I'll tell you kind of how it started, was just not taking care of myself. I started to get nauseous when I'd eat a meal. Like after I'd eat a meal, I'd get very bloated, uncomfortable, I'd get gassy, I'd have to burp and belch kind of a lot. And at first it wasn't so bad, but eventually it started getting worse and worse and worse. I was eating fast food all the time. Uh, who knows what's in food nowadays, genetically modified, who knows what. Um, I was eating a lot of this kind of food, processed foods, um, drinking sodas, uh, drinking alcohol a lot, beers, um, hard liquors too as well. And um, so I just noticed that of so many years of neglect, the symptoms kept getting worse and worse. So it got to a point where I'd order a meal and I could maybe eat a fourth of it, like at the worst point. And then as soon as I ate that little bit of a meal, I'd immediately get uncomfortable. I'd immediately have bloating. And, and usually the only way to relieve myself of these symptoms was to go to the restroom and vomit. It'd make me want to just throw up. And it got so bad that then eventually I started throwing up blood. So when I was vomiting, there was blood. And this was happening every single morning at four in the morning, six in the morning, every single day. So it just started to drain on me, months of this and years of this, of this not being able to sleep, not being able to eat, um, really not being able to be pleasant or kind of be myself like I used to be before I got this disease. Living the kind of lifestyle I lived, I always consumed cannabis. And what I didn't know until later when I moved to Colorado is that I was actually consuming cannabis medicinally. I would roll a joint and I'd smoke it. And I later found out that this method is, is a, it is a medicinal method, but it's the least effective uh, method of ingesting this medication. It's called titrating your dosing. And it's effective, it's immediate. So as soon as you, you take that hit, it goes into your bloodstream and it starts working, but that feeling will only last for 10 minutes. And so I was constantly smoking. All the time, I would smoke an ounce a week, 25, 28 grams a week, just always be smoking. I'd roll a joint and then I'd smoke another one. And I realized it's because it kept my stomach settled, it kept me calm, it kept me relaxed. My friend, he always smoked uh, the weed. Mm. Then he died of cancer. Yeah, but, but that, again, it's... it's uh, the oil is different mm. than the, the smoking. When you, I always told people, like, when you light a joint on fire, over 90% of the medical aspect just went up in smoke. I, I have been contacted by a couple of people who said they cured their cancers by smoking cannabis. I, I, I have to be honest. But the vast majority of people smoking cannabis, it might ease them. They're suffering a bit, but it's not going to cure the cancer. The extracts will. So I always had a lot of cannabis on me. And this ended up being a problem because I lived in Texas. And if you're unfamiliar with Texas, it's one of the most restrictive states um, in the United States regarding cannabis laws. So even if you have a seed or a stem, they'll take you to jail in Texas. And so someone like myself, I'm, I'm a cannabis patient, even though I, I don't know it and there's not a medical cannabis program in the state to officially say that I'm a cannabis patient, even though I'm consuming it like any other patient would in another state, I'm driving around with cannabis all the time. So quite a few times I ended up being caught with cannabis in my car and after enough of these times being caught with it in Texas, it ended up, I ended up being jailed. Time and time again, I'd be jailed. I think I got jailed between 12 and 15 times. And the last time, the judge kind of, kind of wanted to throw the book at me. And he's, he, I basically had to stay in jail or into a, a state hospital for two years of my life. I lost two years of my life when I was uh, 24 years old. I had to be locked behind a cage and really wasn't able to get out until I was 26. So in this time I was on probation, jail, or in a state psychiatric facility locked behind uh, closed doors and I wasn't able to get out. They said I was incompetent to stand trial. Take it from me, I've been to jail for growing cannabis. Um, and it wasn't just because I was growing, it's because after I got arrested I spoke up about it. 
if enough of us do that, then people like myself won't keep getting arrested and we won't be the minority. As soon as this period of time ended, it was around 2016, um, I went back to Texas for a few months, met my beautiful girlfriend, Valerie, and, uh, and she moved to Colorado when this was happening. And then I started thinking, well, you know, I'm finally clear with my charges. Why am I still here in Texas? I wanted to leave. And so I decided, hey, I'm gonna move to Colorado also. It's legal there. They have medical cannabis and they're just passing a law for recreational cannabis. And recreational cannabis means anyone over 21 can buy cannabis legally at a store. Just like Starbucks, the dispensaries are on every corner now in Colorado. So I moved to Colorado, now I'm free. I'm able to consume cannabis openly. I see a doctor. My doctor gives me a prescription to grow 99 plants. And I start meeting I, I, other activists who are speaking about cannabis. And so for the first time, I'm able to openly discuss cannabis in city halls. I, I'm a patient. Uh, I'm one of the uh, 99 plant count holders here in Colorado. I testified on quite a few different bills in the state capitol in Colorado um, for medical cannabis patients, because that's what I am. Um, I've lived here eight months. I was a, I'm an American uh, medical refugee because of can cannabis. You know, I went through a lot jail, prisons, I was actually uh, confined to mental institutions, uh, several of them, um, because the police could do that to an activist in Texas. So um, I'm here in Colorado, living the dream, and um, I, the next calls I want to take up is cannabis, because uh, the world, the, the country needs to hear our message. So while I was in Colorado, I really began learning a lot more about medical cannabis than what I knew. I didn't really know all about the medical properties. I'm a filmmaker. When, at the University of Texas, I got a degree in filmmaking, radio, television, and film. So I didn't know what I wanted to make a film about, but I know I needed to make a film about medical cannabis patients and their struggle, and just about medical cannabis in general, to try to educate people. I met two people, um, Colton Turner and Dale DeMasi. Dale was already filming a movie on Colton. And Colton, basically, he was a 14-year-old teenager at the time who had Crohn's disease. And before I met Colton, I didn't really know much about Crohn's disease. I hadn't really even heard about it. And Dale saw me filming. We both were in the Capitol one day filming for the patient lobby day. And eventually, Colton's mom came up to us and kind of told us, hey, both of you guys are filming a movie. Why don't you guys team up? This project started about a year and a half ago. Two separate projects, Mike and I, both are filmmakers, and we both... So I teamed up with Dale on this last film, and we released it everywhere. It's called Illegally Alive. Uh, you can see it for free online. It's about um, families who had to relocate from states where it's illegal, like Texas, Kansas, Illinois, to Colorado to get access to medical cannabis for their children, um, where it is legal. So they have to leave their family, their friends, their business, everything they know, their home, just to be able to get medication for their children. and It's not right, and this is what the film is about. And so when I was in the course of filming this movie, I started hearing a lot about Rick Simpson. I was seeing Rick Simpson, Rick Simpson oil, and I was reading a lot about it, a lot of articles online, and a lot of them said, well, Rick Simpson oil, he's cured 5,000 patients from cancer by using this oil that's high in THC. And so Colton, in, in our movie, he was using what's referred to as a tincture, which is high in THC, but it's a diluted form of pretty much Rick Simpson oil, high THC cannabis oil. It's diluted into hemp seed oil or, or MG coconut oil, something, something different. So it, make, it gives it that golden color. But there's also a lot less cannabinoids in there and a lot less of the actual medicine that you need. And that's what he takes, and that's what kind of put his symptoms at bay. And so just while I was filming this movie with him, we're going, traveling all over. I'm driving with them because I really want to get the documentary filmmaker experience. And so I'm like almost living with the family. We're going on trips and I am really get to knowing them and Colton. Now, without cannabis, I wouldn't be able to do that. With it, I can become a lot better, but I can't because I can't come back here. Here, where are we? Where is here? Jerseyville, Illinois, my hometown. Born and raised. And I'm, I'm learning more about Crohn's disease and, and I'm like, well, you know what? All the symptoms that you're talking about, I have. And I've had these symptoms for 10 years, 15 years now, and I've just been dealing with them because that's what I do. I deal with it, you know? And 
that's when I started realizing that's, that Crohn's disease is really what, what I have and that's what's affecting me. And so when I was looking up about Rick Simpson oil and said, this oil can cure cancer. So I kind of thought to myself, I was like, well, if this, if this oil is strong enough to cure cancer, I wonder what it'll do to Crohn's disease. That's what I have, you know? So I decided to do the protocol, like I was, like Rick states. Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly asking, like the first thing I said to you when, when I walked up to you this morning, or this afternoon, was, are you kind of feeling? You know, because he is sick, and he is going through the same things that Colton's gone through, and Kim's is helping him. And it has been such a crazy journey for me to see because I see him well, and I don't worry about him anymore. And then I see Mike, and I'm like, Mike, are you okay? Are you okay? I he's probably thinking, oh my gosh, why don't she just shut up? Poor Mike. <laughs> no, but it, it really has become this thing where we're touching lives. From my first dose, I felt instant relief. I was able to sleep fully at night. I was able to eat a full meal. I didn't vomit that day. I had no problems. Uh, it, it really was an amazing experience. And it was so amazing that I actually got kind of confident, a little bit overconfident with it. So I didn't take 60 grams of oil in 90 days. I only took about seven grams in two weeks, three weeks or so, and I, I kind of stopped taking it. So at this time, I actually have gotten in touch with Rick because I was filming my last film and I said, hey Rick, um, I've heard a lot about you. I'd like to interview you for my film. And he said, sure, you know, I'd be happy to interview you. Uh, we could do it on Skype because I live in Croatia. And, you know, being kind of the, the filmmaker I am, I want to have the highest quality of, of uh, work that I, that I can present to people. So I didn't want to do a Skype interview. I told Rick, you know, I'll go to you in Croatia. So I booked my ticket and I went over there. I'm staying there with Rick for about 10 days. It's over Thanksgiving in 2016. And, um, we go, we meet in Croatia in Zagreb and he has to speak in Ljubljana at a conference. So I meet him there, we talk a lot about the oil and all sorts of things. I tell him about the film and what I want to do. And I got some blooms. And what I do, I take a, take a puff off a joint like that and then blow it in, you know, through the pipe into the bloom. And you keep doing, do that about eight or, eight or 10 times, you know. And that way you get all the cannabinoids. You know, so yeah. <laughs> it can really stretch, you know, that, that if you only have a small amount of cannabis, it, it'll stretch, you know, the amount of time that uh, it'll take to use it up. But it, it worked very well. I mean, you know, it looks stupid, but it worked. And you, and you really, you got high. <laughs> There's no question about that. <laughs> and I'll, I'll never understand why people have such a, you know, when you look at the number of people, like in the United States, Canada, all these countries that have been using pot for years, you know, with no harm, why are people so afraid of getting high? You know, where's the danger here? Where, you know, where's the harm? So uh, we jump in Rick's $300 Toyota Corolla, 1981 Corolla, and uh, drive from Zagreb to, to Ljubljana in Slovenia. And Rick's just finished giving his lecture. He's talking to patients outside behind the venue and I'm trying to film as much as I can because I need to film this, you know, I haven't eaten. It's already been four or five hours, I haven't eaten. I'm starting to get nauseous. I'm starting to get kind of bloated again. I'm starting to get sick, feeling like I'm gonna throw up. So I end up throwing up right there in the back in front of everybody, I'm throwing up, there's blood and everything. And Rick comes up to me and he goes, Mike, you really need to get on this oil. You know, he's like, you really need to take this oil, brother. And so that was kind of really like the kick in the butt, you know, that I needed. And after that point, as soon as I got back home to Colorado, I began the regiment and I took 90 grams in 120 days of the oil. So when I got back to Colorado and started kind of telling everybody on social media that I, I'm taking this oil and it's working great for me. We are patients. We are not criminals. Let us grow. It's against the law for any dispensaries to tell you any information saying, hey, try this for this medicine, or this for this disease, or try this for this. Um, in Colorado, it's actually illegal to make cannabis oil uh, the way we make it. And so it was kind of a bold thing for me to do, to be telling people publicly online that, hey, I'm making this oil. If you want it, I can make it for you, because um, I wanted to help patients out. So I was telling people just to bring me the materials 
and the solvent and I'll make it for you for free. And during this time, this, it's really starting to spread. Hey, people want cannabis oil, people need cannabis oil, my brother needs it, my mother needs it, my sister has this disease, my cousin has this disease. So now to kind of push the activism a step further, I actually offer the oil for sale publicly online on a public website that anyone can see. In this whole process, I learned about the different ways of taking it. Like I said earlier, you can titrate it by smoking it, but that's not recommended, especially not with the oil. You can orally ingest it, or you can take it via suppository. And a suppository actually provides the most medicinal relief. So I kind of found out about this halfway through. So the first 45 grams I took were orally, and then the second 45 grams I took were via suppository. Do this, take the capsule, and so there's about three grams total in the syringe. Um, I'm gonna put half a gram in there. And ever since then, I've taken maybe one gram per month. I don't take too much more than that, kind of as a maintenance dose. If I, if I eat something that I know might upset me, maybe I want to have a glass of wine or something I know that could irritate me, I just have a little bit of oil beforehand, and then I'm fine. I have no problems. I ended up doing 90 grams in 120 days. I changed my diet completely, and I also removed as many uh, sources of stress from my environment. So not only I had a lot of stress in the United States, so I moved. Now I live in Europe. So we're living out in Zagreb uh, with Rick and for the year while we're there I'm trying to film as much as I can with him and we end up going all over to give lectures and film. I mean we're going to Spain, we're going to the Netherlands, we're going to Greece, we're going to Slovenia, we're going to Morocco. Welcome to Holland! Welcome to Holland! <laughs> we're going all over to really just talk about medical cannabis in, in these expos that are now starting to pop up all over Europe. Europe's really starting to catch on to medical cannabis. You act as a son of road. <laughs> and and Paris, France layovers. Oh yeah, yeah Paris, France layovers. <laughs> yeah. And while we're there, it really is amazing what happens um, because after every lecture that Rick gives, all these patients come up to him and they just want to talk to him and they want to shake his hand. And, and it really is an amazing sight to see all these people who are cured from these crazy, inoperable brain tumors, cancers that the doctors gave up on the patients and sent them home to die. They end up taking this oil that, that he made and now they're cured from their disease. I have seen people break down in tears completely because he really has given these people their life back, and I can tell you because I got my life back. Most of us were quite intelligent, and that we could accept the truth if, if the proof was provided to back it up. Well now, the proof has been provided, and for the past 17 years, I have been, I have been spreading that, this knowledge worldwide. Rick has videos out there on how to make it. He tells everyone how to make it for free. He believes everyone should know this. He just does it out of the kindness of his heart. My brother had uh, three types of cancer. Three types? Yes, and it's brain cancer and micro... Why, I'm not sure what it's called. Anyway, his last scans were totally clear. I shot After taking, <laughs> yes, oil for approximately five months. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like they're growing a half a dozen different strains here. You can see there's one big one right over there. You know, it's a, it's a nice region. You know, the people are friendly. There's a sense of freedom here that you don't find in most places. And, you know, when you see cannabis crops like this, you know, in the future, this, this will make so much difference, you know, to this country. 
and to the whole world. You know, once they realize the healing potential that's right there in front of us. You know, these strains here, even well, even these strains, they're making hash with it, and it, it does have, you know, a certain amount of healing potential. But we can bring, we can bring it way, way up, much higher than it is now. And you know, these people can make more money and make better medicine. It's, it's, you know, it's good for everyone. You know, and we can produce this medicine at a very reasonable cost. You know, we're, not, we're not talking. You know, if you get sick, it's not going to cost you $25,000 to heal yourself. No, it's definitely a nice place. I had no idea what was really happening here. But, uh, you know, obviously you can see they're growing some very nice cannabis. But the problem here is just the potency. You know, like the extracts, we're looking at probably 50 to 60% THC. So we're looking next year to bring better strains in you know, to produce better medicine. And, uh, you know, these are the right people to grow it. Yeah. You know, they're experts. They've been at it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is the future, and I think it would be wonderful for, for the whole country. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Rift Mountains are famous for their hashish, but very soon now they're going to be famous for their medicine. Yeah. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> Another pretty cool thing that happened was while I was in Colorado, a friend of mine kind of approached me and he said, hey, do you want to do this radio show? Um, we started there, it was called Blazin' FM, and eventually he had to kind of go his own way and I started broadcasting on my own. And my show was all about bringing medical cannabis information to the public. So I was a little bit radical with that and a little too revolutionary, so much so that the radio station kind of told me I had to dumb down my content or basically leave. And I said, I'm not gonna ever dumb down my content, so you know, peace. And I went to an online radio station after that. Toke Radio is great, love you guys. Um, thanks for everything, seriously. Um, and then I kind of just decided to make my own platform, my own page. And so we have Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, all with the Mike Wise Show. And our slogan is Patience Over Profits. You can watch videos I have, you can send me a message. It might take me a week or two to answer it. I will get back to you. I'm live with Greg Simpson on the Mike Wise Show. And uh, we'll go ahead and answer the questions. Um, we'll try to get to as much as we can today. And uh, before we do, I kind of... Uh... A lot of people get concerned with the laws and you know laws may serve their purpose but there's certain laws that are immoral and you know unjust and cannabis prohibition is one of them at least i believe this that everyone should have access to this plant and it's it's a crime to keep people from accessing this you know decriminalization and legalization that still comes with many restrictions and regulations that we you know this plant simply does not require so it's it's, it's really, I look at it as being nothing more than another government scam, you know, to keep regulations and make their, the rich elite, you know, their masters, to make them happy. So I'm totally against legalization and decriminalization. Repeal the laws. That's what we need. It's a question of how much CEC you have. It's a question of how much step you have with your THC. You know what well, I mean? The reason, like, I, the reason I tend to harp on THC especially is because THC is out of the 144 you mentioned, which one is the most demonized? THC. So we're talking about cannabis as a plant, and that's what we use when we make these extracts, regular cannabis. But the reason I really harp on THC the most out of them is because that's what's illegalized the most, and that's what we need to make legal. I was going to ask if you're familiar with using a cannabis oil prepared via the Rick Simpson protocol and what your thoughts are on that if you are familiar with it. Well, to the best of my understanding, uh, this protocol leads to high doses of THC in the oil. There are a huge number of people that use cannabis for various types of cancer, including that particular oil. Now the interesting thing is that although thousands of people are using cannabis for cancer, there isn't a single published clinical trial with any uh, cannabis, cannabis, plant, uh, individual compound for cancer. We don't have the data. So when somebody comes to me and asks me, uh, my parent has this or that type of cancer, will cannabis help him? I say maybe, but I can't give him or her 
uh, in a data. He asked how much, how often, what is the ratio, and I can't give him or her uh, enough data. And that's one of the reasons many physicians are unhappy to uh, give cannabis as a drug because it's not uh, what they would like to see. They, when a, you, you go to a physician for any disease, he will tell you take this type of let's say, antibiotic, this level, take it for three times a day, take it for a week, come back afterwards. This is not true for cannabis, unfortunately, because I am under the impression that certain cancers most definitely cannabis seems to help. But between this and the modern understanding of a drug, there's a huge uh, gap. You go to a doctor, they, they give you a prescription for whatever's wrong with you, then before you know it, while well, you're getting side effects. And then the next thing, they give you another damn pill. And before you know it, you're taking six, eight, 10, 12 pills a day, which are really doing you nothing but harm. You can grow this plant from a seed in your house and make this oil yourself. I've now made cannabis oil for thousands of patients, and I've done it every time illegally. I've never actually made the oil legally. I don't have 10 years or 20 more years or 30 more years to wait for a pharmacy to come through with some fancy medication. I have a medication that many other patients have taken, and we can make ourselves in our kitchen with the plants we've grown from our own seeds. You don't need a doctor, you don't need a pharmacist, you don't need a, a pharmacy, a, a scientist. That's what's so amazing and revolutionary about this and why I'm really getting behind this cause is because you can do it yourself. I'm the mother of a boy who was given three days to live. Um, he had two forms of cancer, four failed by marrow transplant. And yeah, basically gave us three days to live. I gave him cannabis and he didn't die. And since then, I have become an activist um, because I believe that there's only so much we can do, so the best thing we can do is help the people that need the help right now. These are stories that are undeniable where cannabis helps these children's conditions. So I feel that it's extremely important that all of us share these stories locally on social media. Talk about them in person to anybody who will listen. Talk them to your family. Talk to the person at the grocery store. The, anywhere you go, talk to people about these patients who have undeniable relief from using medical cannabis. And I think if we all talk about and share these stories, then we can also help to get these laws passed to legalize cannabis because no politician or bureaucrat can deny that cannabis does not work for these people. A lot of you guys have Facebook or Instagram, or even if you do this in person, when you talk about using cannabis, talk about the famous patients you know in your area. Callie's a great example with Darren. Um, mention that so you can help to normalize and it's, it's an undeniable story that cannabis helps you know this is something that's unarguable there's so many amazing things that you can do with this plant you can turn it into an ethanol and you can run you know your car off of it you can use it in a concrete make a hemp creek and build a house with it it's it's a nutrient um, a lot of people juice the raw plant that helps for a lot of conditions besides taking the oil I really hope that by by you know, making this film and, and making the oil for sale, you know, offering it publicly um, to anyone who asks. I, I, and just like constantly on social media, pushing and going to lectures and traveling to marches and just speaking about the plan. I really feel if we just keep doing this and keep pushing this and others will join our cause and eventually we will all be able to have access to this life-saving plant because we deserve it. Grow as much as you can, talk to everybody about this plant, and hopefully we will overcome. Yeah. Things have really started picking up. People like the message I'm putting out there, which is really exciting for me. I, I appreciate the support that everyone gives me. I can't do this without you guys. Um, and now we just bought a caravan, which is kind of cool. So we're going to be really touring around Europe and really trying to get the message out there about medical cannabis. So if you see me, say, hey, What's up? <laughs>
you know, so emotionally riveting, these stories you hear, especially with the children who, if they didn't have access to this plant, you know, they would be having hundreds of seizures a day or they'd be dead from cancer, inoperable brain tumors. Um, and to kind of meet these people and become friends with them is really awesome and be able to go to lectures and expos with these with uh, these other activists and act advocates is really awesome for me. And uh, it's just really awesome, everything that's, that's going on. Hello, hey everybody. I know they told you I wasn't gonna make it today, but I made it. Customs couldn't stop me. We drove thousands of miles to come to you guys and speak today with the lecture I'm gonna give. Um, so today is going to be a little bit of a different lecture, uh, something along the lines of my personal healing journey with cannabis. So the reason why I'm an activist and the reason why I'm here today is because of cannabis. Thank you, Kevin.